Hello, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the WordPress Toolkit in Plesk 12. This is a new feature in Plesk 12, and it's early days for the Toolkit, and I bet Parallels have massive plans for this for the future. The current version of Plesk I'm using is 12.0.18 micro update 14, just in case the WordPress Toolkit changes as time evolves. WordPress Toolkit is on the left-hand side in Service Provider view here under Server Management. There's a tab called WordPress. And when you click it, that gets you straight to the Toolkit. If this does not show up for you, then maybe it's a good idea to check your license. If you head over to Tools and Settings in Service Provider view, or if you're using the Power User view, then you'll have these tabs at the top. One of them will say Server, and that will get you to the same screen here. Under Plesk, you have license management and under this first tab here parallels plesk license key at the very bottom you'll have something called wordpress toolkit and that needs to be set to on if this is set to off then your current plesk license does not allow you to use it but fret not you can buy an add-on license for the wordpress toolkit from the parallels website the wordpress toolkit is also available for customers if you allow that to happen and it'll show up here on the right hand side that lets your customers manage WordPress installations across all their subscriptions. Let's head over and explore the toolkit. I haven't used this before on this server, so I only have one WordPress installation showing up here, which has been installed via the APS installer. But in the previous video, I have also prepared three manual installations, and the WordPress toolkit doesn't know they exist yet. To bring any manual installations in, head over and click the Scan button, and that'll bring up this other new feature here in Plus 12, which is a background task window. So while this is active and while this is showing its progress, you can navigate to other parts of Plesk and let WordPress Toolkit do its thing. But when it's finished, like now, you need to refresh the page, like so, and then you'll see the remaining installations that the WordPress Toolkit has detected. And you can also click this option here, Hide Completed, and then that background task window will disappear. Every little orange exclamation mark that you see here is an update notification. So all these things are updates that you can apply with one click. If you want to update just this one instance here, then this is what you'd click, the update to 3.9.2. Current version you can see here. And you can also see that these are WordPress installations across a variety of domains and a variety of customers. As a server administrator, you can control them all and upgrade them all from one handy place. That's what WordPress Toolkit really is all about. Manage multiple instances of WordPress across the entire server. Notice these three tabs at the top here. This one, the first one, WordPress installations, is for the WordPress core files. This one is for the WordPress plugins and this one is for the WordPress themes. There are a variety of ways to get the same thing done, so we go through multiple ways of doing the same thing, which is update WordPress in its many facets. One other option I want to bring to your attention is this one here at the very top, Install All Now. If you click that option, then every WordPress instance that is managed by the WordPress Toolkit and all plugins and all themes will be updated with one click. That may not necessarily be what you want, but that's an option that you have. So here's how this works. If you select from this screen here, from the WordPress installations, if you select a number of installations, so one or two, maybe it'll take two, and hit update, then that is what will be updated, but only for the WordPress installations. Likewise, if you head over to plugins and you see what kinds of plugins you have installed, you can tick one and hit update here, and that will update this one plugin on the entire server across all your installations. Now, the same goes for themes. Head over to themes and you can see that I have effectively the same theme installed but several versions of it are available. So there's 2012 1.3 and 2012 1.4. This one is the one that obviously needs updating and you can do that either from here or select the items that you want to update and hit the update button. And that will update all these themes that you've selected across the entire server. You can also install themes and plugins from this screen. This works in two ways. You can either selectively install themes or plugins on a number of WordPress instances that you select, for example, this one and that one, and then either select the plugins, hit this little button, and find a plugin you want to install, for example, Zen Dash. That's one of my plugins. And if you uh, hit return here, then, or the little um, search icon. This searches the wordpress.org repository to find the plugin that matches your search string here. Tick the one you like, 
scroll down and hit install. If you tick this tick box here, activate after installation, then this plugin will be activated on the instances that you've selected. Let's try that out. WordPress Toolkit goes to work, background task window remains open. And let me demonstrate this. You can literally go away to other parts of Plesk and this window will always stay at the top here. Oh, I've got a CPU problem, have I? Well, let's worry about that later. Let's head back to the WordPress Toolkit, hide the completed window here. And this will have installed the plugin on instance number one and number two. And I've also activated it. Well, let's see if that works, shall we? There's one convenient option here, which is the login option. From here, you can literally log into the admin interface of the selected WordPress instance, if Plesk knows the details to an admin user. Hit login, and you get through to the admin interface. Under plugins, installed plugins, let's have a look. Zendash is indeed here, and it's active. I can deactivate it from here if I like. If you'd like to install a plugin or a theme on all instances on your server, then you can select any of these options. So under plugins, you could select install. Again, the search window comes up. Let's look for another of my plugins called child theme wizard. Hit return and the installation goes to work. And there we go. This is the first one. If you click the little, or if you hover over the little question mark, then you get the same description that you'd get inside your WordPress admin panel, or in fact, on the wordpress.org website. You can see a rating here, see what people think of it. Five stars. I like it. Thank you guys. Very good. Tick the plugin in question, scroll down, and you can, if you want, activate it on all installations. Hit install, and this will now install this plugin on all WordPress instances that are currently managed by the WordPress Toolkit. Great, refresh the page, hide completed, and we can now see that the child theme wizard is available on these four installations. You can do the same for plugins on themes you no longer want. So the, if I'm demonstrating the plugins here, the same is true for themes. It's, it works in the same way. If there's a particular plugin you don't want on any of your installations anymore, you can do that from this screen as well. Select the one you don't want, for example, Hello Dolly, click it, and you can either select Deactivate, Activate, or Uninstall. If you uninstall, it comes up with a warning window, you say yes, and now the WordPress Toolkit goes to work and removes this plugin from all your WordPress installations. This is handy if there's one that's really annoying and you really never wanted to have in the first place. Goodbye, Dolly. Let's head back over to WordPress installations and let's see how we can update a WordPress installation. Right now in this instance, this is still running WordPress 3.7. You can see the retro type interface here and I think it's time that we upgrade. The current version at the time that I'm recording this video is WordPress 3.9.2, but WordPress 4.0 is just around the corner. You have a couple of choices here. You can either click this link and WordPress Toolkit goes to work immediately and only updates this instance. Or if you'd like to update multiple instances, you can select them here and hit update. You can even do that right now. And then there's another task that is being populated in that little background task window. And you can keep going like that. From this front screen here, you could also choose to update a theme like 2013. Hit update and it's just added as another task here. This can become quite a long list and all the completed tasks are being taken care of as well. So once completed, one WordPress toolkit is currently working on. There, all completed. Let's refresh to pull in all the changes, hide the window, and there we go. Everything's up to date in regards to the WordPress core files. We still have a few plugins and themes that we need to update. Perhaps to make that happen, I'll just choose the install all now button. And that will go to work. That comes up as one task, but it will update all the WordPress instances, all the plugins, and all the themes. I really like that window here because it does allow you to do other things in the panel. For example, head over and check out your backup manager and kick off a backup, for example, or do any kinds of other maintenance work that you usually need to do in Plesk. And all the while, WordPress Toolkit does all the hard work for you in the background. It's very swish. Let's see how successful the WordPress Toolkit was in updating our instances. This one was domain.com forward slash one. And if I head over to the admin interface, I can already see I'm, I'm using the non-retro version of WordPress here. Head over to the dashboard, and yeah, absolutely, I'm running WordPress 3.9.2. Let's take a look at the plugins that have been installed, allegedly. Yeah, true, Zendash is active, and the child theme wizard is also active. 
You can access that under Tools, by the way. If ever you want to make a child theme, it's a really convenient way to do that. WordPress Toolkit has a few other tricks up its sleeve. For example, you can log in as an admin user into any of the WordPress instances from here and take a look if everything's all right there. If Plesk already knows the details for an admin user, it will lock you straight in, like I've demonstrated before in instance number one. But instance number three, it doesn't quite know what the admin user is. So if I click that, then this window comes up and it effectively says, hey, we need an admin user here. What are the admin details? And you can just enter them right here. They'll be saved in the Plesk database securely, so you don't have to maintain another list of your client's access details. You can also change the admin user here if you like. Hit OK. And this screen we're going to talk about later is another login option. You click that, and Plesk logs you in to the instance in question. Let's check the plugins here, shall we? Install plugins. Child Theme Wizard is the one that we had installed on all our instances and activated. Perfect. Let me come back to this little screen and let me show you how to access that. From the WordPress Toolkit and this very top link here under Name, if you click that, that gets you to that management screen. This looks very similar to the screen that you get in the Customer Control Panel when you manage an APS application, for example WordPress. There's a subtle difference and we're going to talk about that in a second. So from here you can also go into your admin interface, login just gets you to the dashboard, manage themes and plugins brings up this handy dialog here, much like we just had in the WordPress toolkit. Under the administrator option here, you have a link called manage. And if you click that, another window comes up and that's the one that we've just been in. You can add your WordPress admin user here. Don't call it admin, call it something else. Let's just say it's a user with administrative privileges give it the WordPress password, or if you're changing it, you can change this user by populating this field. This is a handy way to keep track of the login details for each active WordPress installation. But let's say, for example, this is an instance, instance number two, that you do not longer want to mass manage via the WordPress toolkit. The easiest way to do that is to hit detach. And when you do, after the warning window, instance number two no longer appears in the list of managed WordPress instances. This can come in handy if there's one instance that you do not want to manage via the bulk management tools. Another very interesting thing about the WordPress toolkit is something called the security check. So again, if you just click that, nothing will happen and you're being prompted to select an item first. It's the same for plugins and themes. If you click that, it will tell you that you need to select the WordPress instance first that you want to perform this action on. So let's select one. For example, instance number one. And let me demonstrate the security check here. WordPress Toolkit goes to work and tells you what is wrong with your instance or what could potentially be wrong. Now, anything that's got a green tick box here is obviously fine. Anything with an orange exclamation mark is something that you may or may not want to be concerned about. And something with a red exclamation mark means, hey, this can definitely do with some improving. Database prefix is a popular one. By default, all the WordPress tables have a prefix, and that's usually WP underscore. But because hackers know that, it's very easy to identify what your WordPress database tables are. By the way, if you hover over this little question mark, then it'll explain what this feature in the WordPress Toolkit security does here. So in this case, the WP underscore is identified and would be replaced with something random, like a random string. In my case, that's not a problem because I've installed it manually. Or if you install a WordPress instance via the APS installer in Plus 12, that will also already be patched and have a database prefix other than WP underscore. So in my case, that's not a problem. But on WordPress installations that have a table prefix of WP underscore, this would be flagged up. In a nutshell, all these changes that the WordPress Toolkit performs here can be rolled back unless mentioned otherwise, like here. So for example, you change the database prefix to something random and you find out this has caused a problem on your WordPress installation. Then you can roll this back. Let me demonstrate this. Perhaps I'm gonna untick these two and just leave these two boxes ticked for security of the configuration file and the directory browsing permission. Hit secure. WordPress Toolkit goes to work, and it's finished. Now we have green tick boxes here. But should I identify that there was a problem, just hit the roll back button, and the changes that the WordPress Toolkit has applied are being undone. Very handy feature. Of course, this renders this a security vulnerability again. Not all these changes can be rolled back, so the hiding the WordPress version and fixing the permissions for files and directories cannot be rolled back, but that usually 
doesn't cause a problem. These two items here on the bottom, security of the WP content folder and the security of the WP includes folder, those are things that WordPress security consultants recommend be changed. But plugins and themes can behave, well, let's just say erratic about these and demand permissions to certain directories in the WP content folder or get confused if the WP includes folder is at a location that is not accessible from the web, in which case that can definitely cause a problem. But like we said before, if we just try it and secure the WordPress installation in question and it doesn't work out for us, we just use the rollback function and we're all set. If since last time you checked, an update has happened for any of the core files, plugins or themes, you can just recheck with this handy option, check for updates. And this will go and just scan if there are any updates for any of these items, plugins, themes or the core files and will report it accordingly. Let's refresh and we'll see, well, in our case, there just weren't any updates. Just something to keep in mind. If other WordPress instances have been added manually anywhere on your server, you can just hit the scan option again and find other WordPress instances. So remember the one that I've removed earlier, number two? Well, if I scan it, it'll be back and it can be managed again by the WordPress toolkit. Let's have a look at the first instance here. This is the one that I've installed via the APS installer. Click on that. And this management screen looks a little bit different. In fact, it looks exactly the same as the managed application screen from that very subscription. So from here, you can centrally manage any WordPress installation. You can switch on or off automatic updates if you like, and you can also manage the administrator user from here. If you want to change other settings, you can head over here to change settings, and you can even remove WordPress instances right from here. If you need to know the administrator's password to an APS instance, just click on the show button and that will show you the very complex random password that the APS installer has given this instance during installation. If you don't want your customers to have access to the WordPress toolkit, then you need to change this in the service plan. Head over to service plans, pick the service plan in question, in my case that's default domain. Head over to permissions, scroll down to the bottom and you will find these two tick boxes. So you can be very granular about that. You can allow access to the WordPress toolkit, but disallow the security checking feature. Or you can just allow or disallow access to the WordPress toolkit altogether. Hit update and sync, and the WordPress toolkit is gone from your customer control panels. That was it, I hope this was helpful. WordPress Toolkit is certainly going places and it has made my life as system administrator for WordPress instances a lot easier. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them here below or use the suggest an idea or provide feedback buttons from within Plesk to get in touch with Parallels about new features that you would like to see about the WordPress Toolkit. Don't forget to watch all the other videos in this series. And if you liked this video, please share it with friends, family and total strangers. Bye for now, I will see you next time. Thank you.